healthy ego falling into place, a quiet confidence of being able to overcome her challenges and grow stronger. Sometimes surprises worked in her favor, like when the tea ran direct to her destination. All the other passengers had to get off at the next stop and wait for the next train. She could not forget the times the door had been open for her and not for others. It was a miracle that even with her headphones in, she was able to hear the message, and this message was to stay put and keep working on, even when nothing seemed to be happening, and no matter what anyone else thought about it. Keep flying solo and with others. People wanted to contain water, but water needs to run free so it can continue to seek new nutrients from distant shores. Water shapes the environment around it without knowing it has the ability to do so. Remember that things in life can change quite drastically, Morgan said. Don't be afraid to change with them. But what about staying put, Lane wondered. Could she stay firm in her goals, even if her life was changing? Most of the time, she had no idea what was even happening. I guess that's the way it was supposed to be. If only Maeve and her army knew it was Don's versatility, not his virility, that made him so special. This cattle raid might have been avoided, Lane thought, but then she'd have nothing to write about, and she so loved her stories about cows. I know he can take on male and female traits at will, but how do I identify Don Kulain? Lane asked. If Don represented her ability to be creative and adaptable through different difficulties in life, she had her creative writing to thank for that. It gave her the balance she needed. Modern people are so obsessed with logic and sense, Morgan said. In this land of dreams and intuition, you won't get anywhere with those. Lane thought that following her intuition and writing her make-believe stories from ancient Irish history, the history of her ancestry, was what gave her purpose. It had gotten her through dark times in her life and had given hope to her ancestors too. Her ancestors created the brave Cacolan from an ordinary country boy to defend Ulster single-handedly. Maybe Elaine's adaptation of the cattle raid of Cooley wasn't much different when it came to that because she based it off an ordinary country boy too. She thought that maybe her version could be a modern legend that helped modern people. In the old stories, Cacolan became the Irish people's lifeboat, with his unwavering confidence and foolhardy valor in battle. The people of Ulster loved him, maybe for less who he actually was and more for what he represented, which was an undefeatable warrior. Lane was afraid to follow her dreams, but she also knew there were things inside her that were more powerful than she could comprehend. She just had to release them and let them grow. Bad times can't be avoided, but they have taught us a lot, Morgan said. That's for sure, Lane thought. For a while, they both looked down at the gray space between their dangling feet as if they were on a suspension bridge over a large body of gray-green water, trapped in a stagnant pool. It was a bunch of ugly stuff down there, but it was the bridge she'd crossed to get here. I must get ready, Morgan said, then we'll go see Cacolan. Lane's stomach felt like a tourniquet. It was clear Morgan had forgotten everything that had happened. 
She was a girl again, not the wise old woman. Morgan fluttered into the cottage like an off-center ballerina from an old music box. Lane watched the door whip shut behind her. While Morgan was inside, Lane waited outside with Dawn. Lane studied the webs next to him on the line. It was as if an actual spider had spun them. Spider assured her that everything she did and experienced now was weaving what she'd experience in the future. And everything she enjoyed now was a result of her past efforts. She earned the good life she was living. She'd certainly come a long way from before, and she was proud of everything she'd achieved. She should take a moment and do something nice for herself. Lane knew not everything in life could be accomplished by being too soft or too hard. There was a middle road. This was what made Don so important his versatility and ability to keep changing himself as a situation called. Many mistook Dawn's power as brute strength and sexual drive, just as they had Kekolan's, yet it was his versatility that made him so remarkable. Lane realized she had this inner strength and peace within her. She was the shapeshifter. She just had to keep her vision in her mind's eye. She knew that besides finding Dawn, which represented her dream, she was also here to teach Kekolan the healing ways. A limber body retains less injury than a stiff one, she reasoned, and this was true with hearts also. Maeve and the others overlooked Lane's soft features as weaknesses. They did not know how she transformed pain into power with focus and discipline. She had flown above all restraints of what others had expected of her and fashioned her journey with courage and determination. And even though the road was long, it was like she was just beginning. She was excited to see where it would lead. I just want to have fun, clap my hands, turn around now and dance, dance, dance. I just want to have fun, clap my hands, turn around now and dance, dance, dance. I, I, I just want to have fun, clap my hands, turn around now and dance. I just wanna have fun, clap my hands, turn around now and dance, dance, dance. I just wanna, I just wanna clap, clap, turn around, turn around, dance, dance. I just wanna, I just wanna clap, clap, turn around, turn around, dance, dance. I just wanna, I just wanna clap, clap, turn around, turn around, dance, dance. I just wanna, I just wanna clap, clap, turn around, turn around, dance, dance. I just wanna have fun, turn around, turn around. I just wanna have fun, turn around, turn around. I just wanna. While Lane was examining Morgan's work, the gossamer yarn flung tiny light beads into the shadows. She could see how it almost seemed viable with just the right light, how these early visions had taken form. Her capability to imagine a more expansive future had not developed, but was only beginning to sprout even then. She just couldn't see them because of her disappointment that Max didn't want to be with her, after all. Lane snuck these new visions up when Morgan wasn't looking. These new strings were as much beautiful as they were fragile. It took all the strength she had to muster them, and they were weak things blowing in the breeze, but even they were the start of something. With the right care, they could transform Lane's life and set her onto a brighter future. Future Lane had visions that current Lane could not even conceive, 
let alone put into words. And better yet, she was starting to believe in her own magic to create impossible, extraordinary, brilliant things. Despite whatever false dreams she had been chasing before. Soft but fierce, Lane agreed. She was strong, not like barbed wire, but like fiberglass. People were surprised by her strength. It stung them, but they were left with a sparkly residue on their hands and remained looking down at them for several minutes after.